Lucy with me, Francis Beck. Today it's uh, something I've been wanting to do for a longer time, investigating decaffeinated beans. So here I have two different kinds. One is from Peru and the other is uh, actually I have no clue from where the other one is but it's a mix of Arabica and Robusta. Both of them are going to do a cinnamon roast because in my one earlier experiment um, I did kind of notice them to be a bit more fragile in, in, in the roasting so we're going for cinnamon on the Genie Cafe that's 235 aim temperature and then 30 minutes. Here we go. Let's have a look at some of the details. So this is Peru. It's uh, with the, the Swiss water decaffeination treatments. Um, it actually grew on a, a height, an altitude of uh, 1200 to 1500 meters. The exact value of the coffee is uh, not specified, um, so different ones, and apparently also the exact provenance. Um, from Peru, but I guess from different farmers. So then, the other one that I bought for this experiment was um, this blend of Arabica and Robusta. Now, I find this very funny. If you know a bit about the biology, and that the Robusta plant has actually, well, uh, at least the beans have a lot more caffeine in them. So it, to me it looks a bit ridiculous that you know you would do a mix of 50% Arabica, 50% Robusta. It doesn't really give you a lot of details. I don't remember what I paid for it. I guess it was the cheapest one. And I'm not sure if I would be able to, you know, be able to separate them into the Robusta and Arabica beans. Probably, you know, I would do it based on the size. Um, in any case, why that you would add 50% Robusta for a coffee that needs to be recalculated? But it's not a mystery, it, it will just have to do with the price. Uh, if you like drinking decaffeinated coffee, you, you should actually not be surprised that they charge a little bit more because it does just require an extra step in the process. Um, so maybe then having a mix of 50% Robusta allows the, the coffee shops to be able to offer at a similar price point either the Arabica pure coffee or the decaffeinated coffee. I have no clue, this is really what's going on uh, behind the scenes. Um, and in any case, who knows, maybe the Robusta is tastier after being decaffeinated because that large amount of caffeine is, you know, negatively impacting taste of the non-decaffeinated Robusta, I, I do assume. So I'll go through the process here um, and then we'll jump over to the tasting. Water is boiling, let's get tasting. Now promise a surprise, you can compare to some Illy coffee. We have two variants. They were brought around the same time. This one was never opened actually. So here we go. Each coffee we're doing 9 grams. Okay, that's 6. 8.2. 8.9, just a tiny amount, 
Okay, come on. Yes. Nine. The others I already prepared. My home roast with the Easy Presso. And then the first one that we have here actually is the same Illy Coffee. It might have been opened a year ago. I've actually been using it mainly for milk based drinks and to do the stick vacuum cleaner video where I just threw some away because it it just tastes quite quite bad. It really the smell is already coming here. It really reeks of tobacco. So that's my main interest actually. Will the recently opened one? I mean literally just a few seconds ago. Does that already have that very tobacco-y aromas? We'll be discovering that in about five minutes. Alright, so I'm just trying to get those equal and those equal. There's a lot of bias in this experiment. It's not that that rigid. Let's have a look. Okay. So give it four more minutes. This one was the Peru. The pure Arabica decaffeinated. Then here we have the decaf. The blend of Arabica and Robusto. Earlier I was trying to kind of spot in this mixture if I could take out basically the, the robusta beans and well you, you you really you see the difference basically just um, in the size you see it a bit less so after roasting although if I would have to just separate them on size I would still assume that in the smaller mean average would be actually the Arabica. The Robusta seemed to be resisting the heat, well the mixture, a bit a bit better than the uh, Peru 100% Arabica. So I was first thinking of doing the cinnamon roast profile and then have the cool down, the machine cool down, but uh, it was already quite a very medium to medium dark color, so I did the manual cool down. And the, luckily, I first was roasting the, the Peru one, uh, so I can could then do the this exact same roasting profile for the blend of Arabica and Robusta. Now, um, what I did not know up front is which one uh, am I going to actually uh, prefer? That's, um, that's a big question, of course. Let me just get this organized. We're almost there. All right. So um, for preparing the cupping for the home roasted ones, used the Easy Presso and setting of 18 did the two grams just to kind of clean it and then nine grams that the amount of coffee is uh, equal in all uh, four cups. Um, what I did notice was that the, uh, the blend here with the Robusta seemed to have again more static. Um, I don't know if that's in part due to the bigger beans Roasting the Vietnam Robusta, I also observe this just a lot more static than what I seem to be getting with uh, um, Arabicas. Um, 
freshly roasted arabicas this decaffeinated one they do have their share of static definitely um, this point is just kind of a casual observation not a lot of data to to support this uh, but i'm i'm wondering about it i mean it could be the robustas the beans seem to be a lot bigger but are they as dense as the arabicas not not that sure about it i did try to weigh a few but didn't give me any kind of conclusive answers um, on that so now we're about to few minutes into this should I already start preparing it I guess why not so then in this cupping I have it in a previous video I still don't do that much of cupping really um, if I'm roasting for someone I don't you know take off a few grams to do a cupping or something like this and for my own home use rows I basically just wanna turn them into espresso as soon as possible so it's really when I'm kind of doing this merrily roasting experiments that uh, I get to dedicate some time to cupping although if I wanna get any kind of more professional I guess I should start doing this more. Okay. I must say here this this first Illy one. What's on top? It doesn't look that that tasty. <laughs> okay. So trying not to disturb the coffee then too much. So hopefully that the grounds are sinking to the bottom. And I should have cleaned this spoon a bit. If you don't have a habit of doing these experiments, it's not easy. Okay, that's, that's better. At least keeping it separated between oh I think that actually the um, grind setting that I did with the easy presso is coarser than what you kind of get in these pre-grounds Elise or other pre-grounds coffees alright before the tasting I'll just take a fresh glass Now, I am very biased and I'm not doing a blind tasting here. And I kind of order them in the direction that I think will be best to worst. So, I'm going to start with the worst one, giving the slightly less worst ones a chance of outshining what should be the garbage basically not not because it's ill please don't sue me i still i have it there on my wall all the illis so i don't uh, dislike the brand this has been open for a year and it just tastes really bad let's see if i get the same experience from the cup
Yeah, it's it's all tobacco. Be behind the tobacco, there's some coffee-like acids, right? But um, first impression is just tobacco. It would be strange if you get the tobacco just by by it being open. That would then be kind of an oxidation product or something like that. But let's see here. The one that has just been opened. It's a very different taste. The tobacco is definitely not as pronounced. Ground coffee for all preparation, decaffeinato. So the the box actually it does look different. Both say a hundred percent arabica. This one says espresso smooth taste, decaffeinated ground coffee. So they have not been bought at the same time. Meaning my mother makes this mistake over and over again in different settings. That's also interesting. Hmm. Does it actually say? It should say somewhere, of course. Two thousand and nineteen October. <laughs> and this is. December 2016 so I hope those are the production dates because otherwise that would be quite strange because my mother only bought it still like maybe a year or maybe two years ago at any rate in the background there is a bit of this tobacco kind of sense and what they claim is 100% Arabica. But now let's see. Freshly roasted 50-50 Arabica Robusta. I guess I should clear my palette also a bit. still feel a bit ashiness ever so slightly I'm biased I think this is already better but I wouldn't call myself a huge fan so this is the one that I have all my hopes on Peru, 100% Arabica, Swiss decaffeination process. Ashiness has almost completely, you know, gone away. So, I don't know if I trust this 100% Arabica. You can put it on a box, doesn't make it true. Especially if it's already grounded, I mean, you cannot even have a look at the roasted beans to you know, try and get some indications what the origin might be. But either it's the, the rose profile that goes towards the ashiness or it's the presence of some robusta 
if you know that this kind of decaffeinated coffee is not their main attention, who knows? They shouldn't. It would be risky. So, um, so that I'm not getting sued, I would still give them the benefit of the doubt that it's 100% Arabica, but just roasted too much. Now, that's not saying that this one should be the winner. I mean, this kind of, I mean, oh no, After, now that I go in this direction, that's not just, that's probably no that will stay inside, that, that, this is probably more just being a dark roast, yeah, and this, I, I, I'm quite confident about this order. I still personally prefer my coffees non-decaffeinated, but this this has it's interesting. Um, I, I I roasted a very small batch before. I don't actually remember how it tasted as an espresso, but I'm looking forward to discover that. To make conclusions, I won't make conclusions. Um, a lot more research on my part uh, is necessary, but I can only taste as much coffee a day as I can muster. Enjoy your own experiments and thanks for watching. See you next time.